To, well, I want to welcome you and to worship, but I also want to say Happy New Year early. Amen. Amen. See, you don't wait Amen. to get there to celebrate. All right, see y'all, y'all came to play. You don't wait to get there to tell a thing. I'm telling them thank you now because I know I'm going to get there. Uh -huh. You have to be excited to believe. Thank God. So uh, we will be in full worship at 7 o'clock p.m. sharp. Amen. We will Amen. Be sharply in worship. Amen. Amen. It is our New Year, our New Year celebration service. Amen. It is our communion service, and we also, it is our time to sit down and break bread together. Amen. We will eat as a family in the kingdom of God, and I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I'm excited. I'm, just, I'm excited about today's 
at 3 o'clock service. I'm exceptionally excited about, amen, the 7 o'clock worship service tonight, uh, this evening, amen, to hear what thus saith the Lord concerning us, amen. Hallelujah. We thank God. So once again, I want to say those who would not be in worship with us, Happy New Year to you early, amen. Be safe. I love you. The Lord loves you. But whatever you do, get in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Tell, tell somebody say, whatever you do, whatever you do. don't miss the house of God. Don't miss the house of God. See, I know we came up. They say you go to church first and then you go to the club second. They say you come get your, <laughs> you come get your blessing first before you go out there and tear it up. Amen. Amen. So come get some grace and come get some blood on you. Amen. And see if you want to go out after that. <laughs> I'm coming to tell you, it's an early trap, amen. <laughs> amen, but we thank God, keep playing, hallelujah, we thank God, amen. Um, we're going to jump into Ezekiel 37, again, that's where the Lord has us, amen. We will not be there long, amen. We will not be there long, hallelujah. Um, this, this is very um, important for the people of God here at Prep City to understand and know what thus said the Lord to this church. Amen? Yes. Amen. So if, if, you, if you're joining in, just jump right on in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, just jump right on in. Right on in. Tell you'll fit. Don't worry about it. Amen. You won't. You, never mind. I was going to say something crazy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you will fit. Hallelujah. You don't have to say you must equip. You will fit. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah, but amen. The Lord is send, sending us uh, a gentle reminder. A gentle reminder to, um, to the believers. Because if you don't believe, it will not work. It said, first you must believe that he is God. And he's a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. Amen. So here in, in chapter 37, we had already been diving uh, into it. Keep that sound. Amen. We already been diving into it for the past couple of Sundays because the Lord, I asked God, I said, why are you uh, doing this kind of talking at the end of the, at the, end of the year? Amen. I'm, I'm trying not to, I don't want to tap into uh, to the message for tonight. Amen. So I'm going to try my best. Amen. Don't push me. Don't push me. I ain't no killer. Don't push me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I'm trying to I'm trying to teeter totter here just a little bit because if I jump into it, then just go with it. Amen. Amen. Just come back tonight. And it says come back tonight like you never heard it. <laughs> it's always gonna be different. But I, I, I asked God. I said you. I, I begin to reflect um, through the whole year and what and what the Lord has been echoing and has been um, uh, reverberating through the house. Um, he said to be cool. Oh man, I'm trying. Lord help. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 I have to hallelujah. Shouts out to my pastor, Bishop Markel House. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I just tell you, neighbor, something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. See, y'all playing with that. Just tell them something is about to happen. And that's something, something, let me let me put some clarification. Let me put an address on it. Something good is about to happen. Even if it ain't good, it's still good. Hallelujah. It may not feel good, but it's still good. Something good is about to happen. Hallelujah. I feel that in my spirit. Hallelujah. Something good is about to happen for me. Hallelujah. 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 Let me jump back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Aaron. Back over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. But here in chapter Numbers 37 uh, in the book of Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel and God was God took Ezekiel to a place he's never been before and that was a place where it had a valley full of bones and the scripture said and the bone, bones were very dry uh -huh. and, the bo <laughs> and the bones were very dry, it didn't say they were dry it said they were very dry that means they had been there for a longer length of time versus, you know, the bones that just didn't just die. They had been laying there for a while in the elements, in the wind, the dust, the rain, the sun, the moon. It had been there for quite some time to the point where it had no more life in it. Oh, God. 
amen, the elements have to literally drain every ounce of life that he could possibly remain in the bones. Yes. My God, do y'all y'all miss that? Yes. I said the elements, the environment has literally drained every ounce of life that it could possibly be in the bones. But God took him to a place, hallelujah, to a place, hallelujah, not to scare him, but to develop him. Okay, come on. All right, all right. All right, all right, let me, let me hide up my window, amen. God took him to a place not to, not to scare him or not to show him that, amen, you finna die here, but God took him to a place where he wanted to further develop his tongue. Oh my God, today. all right, he wanted to further develop his mindset, amen. And so here it is, that's what we do on my Jerome on stage, hallelujah. <laughs> here it is, here it is, Ezekiel is in a place he did not ask to go. Here it is, you are in a place that you did not, you did not ask to be in. But because you told God you will serve him no matter what. Your yes got you in the place that you're in now. So actually you did ask to be there, all right? Your yes, your yes, you gave God permission to take you wherever he wanted to take you, to see fit to develop you however he wanted to develop you. Tell your neighbor, God doesn't need your permission to develop you, my God. We didn't say that really loud because many of us do not like to be developed. We like to be pampered and we like to be baby, but we do not like to be developed. Because developing hurts. It not only hurts, but it also cancels you. Yeah. Oh, come on, Dave. That's what I want to hear. Tell him, your develop, tell him his development cancels you. Because if you're going to walk with God, you must first believe that he is God. And you secondly got to agree with God. My God. You cannot walk with him and not agree with him. Come on. Let's look at somebody and say, you can't walk with God and not agree with God. You can find that quote in my book if you get it, amen. <laughs> you cannot walk with God and not agree with God. And so here it is. God had Ezekiel in a place, not because God did not know the bones could live, but he wanted to see if he would walk in agreement with him. All right, see. God knew the bones could live, but he wanted to make sure that you knew that, oh my God, hallelujah. So God, hallelujah, God is saying, I can't let you roll with me and, and talk like me. You can't roll with God and not talk like God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So God wanted to make sure, make sure that you're talking like he's talking. So, so here it is. Let me chill out. Chill out. <laughs> chill out. And so God has Ezekiel seen a couple of chapters before Ezekiel used his voice. Now, we don't know if Ezekiel had um, uh, uh, comp uh, confidence issues. You know, sometimes you can do something and you do and, uh, and, 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 and it happens. But then after that happened, then you go through this little period where you're like, oh, my God, I don't know if I can do that again. Or if I don't know this, I don't know that. And then your confidence starts shifting. So I'm just going to parenthetically, I'm going to give it to you in Aaron's century. Hallelujah, because how he spoke to me, I'm going to give it to you. Amen. God has to put Ezekiel in a place to restore his confidence. All right. All right. All right. But it's, but, it's, but it's not the confidence in himself. It's the confidence in God. God will put you in a situation to restore your confidence in him. Oh, see, y'all not coming in public today. I can only give you what I know. God put me in some situations this year. It's not that I didn't know him, but he needed to remind me of who he was. And how powerful his words really are. My God, today. So he put Ezekiel in a place where it looked like there was no life. Amen. But under, let calm down. Hell it blue. He put Ezekiel in a place to make him regurgitate what he already knew. So he asked Ezekiel a question. But first, Ezekiel, you can follow me in the chapter. Read it at your leisure. We're in chapter number 37 of the book of Ezekiel. Amen. We pretty much, uh, I pretty much dropped down. Hallelujah. And the first verse, amen, says the hand of the Lord was upon me. Amen. First, first, first note, I want you to remember, amen, that the Lord hand is on you. Amen. Okay, so y'all don't know when to talk. Just, just remember, write a little note to yourself, amen, that God hand is still on me. Because there can be some times where you feel like God hand has lifted off of your life. Ask me how I know. Mind your business. Amen. 
So the, so the book opens up and said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. That means he didn't take himself. He, 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 didn't, he didn't take himself. You did not take yourself to this situation. The Lord carried you to that foolishness. The Lord carried you to that test. The Lord, the Lord took you and placed you in, in, in a valley where it looked like you were only crying for, for a season. My God, today. When it seemed like every day you just had tears running down your face. No, it wasn't the devil. It was God. All right, all right, all right. See, a lot of things we blame on the devil ain't got nothing to do with it. It's God that's putting you in there. Well, God wouldn't do that to me. You must ain't read the Bible. Yes, he will. Because he needs you to remember and to know I bottle up every tear that streams down your face. My God. Today. All right, all right, all right. Listen. And he said, it said, and he set me down in the midst of the valley. He didn't send him in a corner. He didn't send him over there. He set him in the midst of it, right? In the heat of the phone, God set him right there. God set you right in the middle of a of a dirty situation. My God, today. And it said in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones. So here I am. It seems like I'm surrounded with chaos. I'm surrounded with misfortune. I'm surrounded with negative reports. I'm surrounded with negative emotions. I'm surrounded. But I'm not just by myself. The Lord is in there with you. Y'all yes, yes. missed that point. Amen. Y'all missed. Even, in, even when I'm walking, I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. He's still with me. All right. Calm down. And he said, and he calls me to pass by them roundabout. He didn't say, I took myself. The Lord caused me to walk around and to observe and to see what I'm in the middle of. And they said, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. My God today. Somebody say open valley. I, I, I'm trying. I know we ain't got long. I better. I, I better run on past this. I better. He said there were men, there were very many in the open valley. All right, God, today. Let me keep going here. And lo, he said they were very what dry. And the Lord, he said, and he said unto me, Son of man. <laughs> he said, Can these bones live? And Ezekiel didn't sit there with a dumb look on his face. He answered him, he said, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. And God clapped back again and said, again. And he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones. Come on. And say unto them, O oh ye dry bones, don't hear me. See, the problem is you want your situation to hear you. Yeah. No, 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 no. Tell your neighbor, your, your situation don't need to hear you. Because if it was up to you, all your situation here is, is your complaint. The why me, all the tears, I didn't used to be like this, I didn't used to have this, I used to have it. Your situation is just listening to you complaining. Tell your neighbor, your situation don't need to hear you. I know y'all might not want to say that, but like, well, who it needs to hear? It needs to hear God. Mm -hmm. It said, he told me, he said, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, oh, ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Yes. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Yes. Part there. Right there. When you hear the word of the Lord, it should cause life to spring back up in your well. So what you're trying to say, Pastor? We've been walking through this for the past couple of weeks. And I asked the Lord, I said, what is this about? Why are you telling the city this now? What are you trying to convey to the city? What are you trying to do? What are you, what are you saying? And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to have to say it again tonight. 
and the Lord, you, what did you ask me? What did you say? Yes. Then you got to ask me. I didn't hear you. What did you you, say, you whispered it. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, I'm getting rid of the language barrier. I know it may not mean nothing to you, but it means something to yes. me. And I said, Lord, what are you trying to say? He said, when you're not talking like me, there's a language barrier. When you're not using my word, we have a language problem in the atmosphere. He said, because you can't talk like you and walk like me. If you're going to walk like me, you got to talk like me. So God said, I'm getting ready to get rid of the language barrier between you and me. And between it and you, God leave. Oh my God, did y'all hear me? He's getting ready to get rid of the language barrier between it and you. So I don't know what your it may be, amen, but your voice is not it. Oh my God. Your voice is not what your it needs to hear. <laughs> your voice needs to hear the word of the Lord. See, therefore, if it's, oh my God. The language barrier. And I know you probably saying, like, I've been talking to my situation for the past six months. It ain't changed. It's a language problem. That's the problem. You've been talking to it. It's not letting the word of God talk to it through you. Not letting the word of the Lord talk to it through you. I don't need to give my situation my word when I got word right here. That word, my word will fail. But the word of God will always be my God. Even until the ends of the earth. The word of God shall always stay. I don't know. I love that my poop that Come on, come on, give me praise right there. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. God said, I'm getting rid of the barrier. I'm getting rid of the blockage. I'm getting rid of the disconnect. You've been disconnected from your blessing because your language has been wrong. say you didn't have a faith problem you had a language problem because you stopped talking like me I'm good and you started talking like yourself then you put a barrier between you and your blessing God said now it's time for you to start talking like me we Ezekiel trying to show us something when you say what God said the Lord your situation responded he said Tell your neighbor when you start talking like God, then your problem will respond. And as long as you want it to talk to you, it will never respond. <laughs> I tell you to start talking like God right now. Hey! I tell you to start trying to God said I'm trying to see when you sound like me it'll look like me and then I don't know where you are right now but whatever you may be I 
need you to start talking the word of the Lord. God said he will never leave you. Neither will he forsake you. Go with me until the end of the earth. Hey! And the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, you got to stop talking to your situation. I better chill. I better chill. Woo! Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Stop talking like God talk. I better chill. I better chill. He said, I'm trying to show the city that your blessing is in your language. Your healing is in your language. If you talk low, you will stay low. Uh huh. But if you talk up, you will go up. Tell your neighbor your blessing. Whatever you need is in your language. It's in your language. Hallelujah. And that of the Lord. He told Ezekiel. He asked him a question. Can these bones live? Hallelujah. And Ezekiel came back and said, Oh Lord, thou knowest. And God's like, I know what I know. But I need to know if you know. If you can live. God wants to know if you know that you can live. See, the thing is, you'll hear everybody else telling you you can live. You can do this. You can go here and go there. But do you believe it yourself? Okay, let me sit back. Let me sit back now. Do you believe it? I'm sorry, y'all. Pray my Lord is strength. Do you believe it yourself? Hallelujah. Do you believe it yourself? Don't spend another day operating outside of your kingdom power. God gave you kingdom language for kingdom authority. My God, today. Don't spend another day talking sideways don't spend another day talking low but you got to have the same tenacity that Ezekiel had in this valley looking at a bad situation he'll put you in a situation to produce the language out of your mouth he didn't put you there to kill you he put you there to birth you my God Hallelujah. the demonstration of the Lord the Lord gave me an example um he gave me an example. How many of y'all have, how many of y'all have children? Whoever well, y'all have children. Now, we don't, we do not come out of the womb talking. We don't. But we come out of the womb having the ability to talk. And so when you get of a certain level of development as an infant, you begin to talk to the baby in the language that it will understand. Sometimes we may think we're teaching the baby how to talk. No, 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 no. It already has the ability to talk. And it already has the vocabulary inside of it. All you doing is just pulling it out of it. So while I got the baby, I'm not teaching you how to talk. I'm, I'm coming for what's already in you. So God was telling Ezekiel, I'm just pulling out what was already in you. I don't have to teach the baby to talk. I'm teaching the baby to talk. With what you already know to do. Open up your mouth and give God some praise in this place. already possesses the ability to speak all you doing is encouraging it to speak so we be like mama dad dad baby then we start saying google gaga baba mama eat eat tee tee maybe we start doing stuff and let you know you see the baby mouth start doing like this trying to trying to oh my god today trying to oh my, I'm trying to keep my cool trying to mimic what you're doing and all it's doing is teaching it that it already possesses the apostolic ability to produce the language that has already been perfect God said you already possess the language that you need yeah tell your 
neighbor you already got inside you what you need what do you mean greater is he that i got to get out of here greater is he that is in me that he that is in the world you don't have to spend another day So the valley was to produce what was already in you. The hard time was to produce what was already in you. Sometimes you don't know what's in you until you put into a position to learn what's in you. So God had to put you in a storm to show you who you already are. Oh man. Just tell your neighbor the storm was worth it, baby. Tell your neighbor the storm was worth it, baby. I know you tried to discredit the storm, but tell your neighbor the storm was worth it. The tears was worth it. Because many of the afflictions of the righteous, I better leave that alone. But the Lord will, the Lord will deliver out of the mouth. So the Lord said, I just have to remind you at the end of the year, your kingdom authority. So you don't go into the next year acting like you don't have authority. Uh, so y'all ain't got this today. Y'all still playing ring around the roses and I'm good. Oh, leave it alone. Hallelujah. 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 Leave it alone. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord, hallelujah. Leave it alone. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord said, do not spin. I had to, I'm about to tap into it. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I could not allow you to spin another one of his minutes in your misery. Because every breath that we have belonged to the Lord. He don't want you to waste another minute acting like what you're not. He said it's in your adoption papers. Oh. He said when I adopted you, you got all the rights. When I got to your son. He said when I adopted you, you got my ability to talk. My God today. What you trying to say? Whenever they ask God a question, he said, I came to do my father's business. Woo, oh my, I better chill. I better, I better chill. I better chill. He said, I have to remind the city of your authority. Because life and death lies in the power of the tongue. How do we know that? He said, because I walked it for you. Whenever I walked, I talked. And whenever I talked, I walked, you saw the evidence of what I spoke. He says, so what make you think you will not have the same power? And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I better, I better leave this law. I better leave it alone. So my, my time is, my time is over. He said, he said, thus said the Lord God unto these bones. Then he started talking to it. He said, and I will cause breath to enter into you. And ye shall live. And I will lay strength upon you. Sinews is a strong fiber that binds the bones together. Come on, come on. See, when you start talking like God talk, everything. Oh, that's what it is. Hallelujah. When you start talking like God talk, everything starts to come together. <laughs> I better sit down. And so I came out here to remind. Let me sit down. Let me sit down. I came out here to remind you that it's about to come together. When you learn how to talk, I'm good. When you learn how to talk, it will start coming together. Because what manner of man is this? That the winds may obey. What manner of man is this? That the birds respond to him early in the morning. So what make you think your situation is absent from responding to God. Right. 
when you start talking like God to your situation, that's the only time your situation is going because it's only conditioned to respond to God. It's, it hasn't been conditioned to respond to you. It responds to the word of God because God is the one that created the storm. So the storm is only going to obey to the one it was created. So if you did create the storm, it's not going to respond to you. But if God sent the storm, it has to respond to the one it sent it. So I need you for the next 30 seconds right now to open up your mouth and start talking. And start talking the word of God. Open up your mouth now. Open up your mouth now. Open up your mouth. Come on, talk to it. Start spitting the word of God. If you're going to spit some bars, spit the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on, 15 more seconds. Put the word of God on it. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. If you can't pray, you praise him. For he inhabits the praises of his people. So God said, in this last quarter, I had to remind you that language matters. How you talk is how you live. And he said, because some of y'all have been talking not like me. So I'm trying to figure out, like I had to ask Adam in the garden, where have you been? Because I didn't tell you this. Who told you this? My God today. Who told you you couldn't make it? Who told you you couldn't do it? Who told you you could not have been in my house because we don't talk like that in my house? Who Your language matters. 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 God said, I have to remind the city. Your language matters. You don't have to look for a word when I am the word. My God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You don't have to look for it. You just got to read it. You got 66 books you can work yourself through. Know the word of the Lord. It's the only language that matters. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I had to remind you. That I'm getting rid of the language barrier. You no longer have the permission to talk like you. Your words are illegal. My word is the only. My word is the only thing that's permissible. If you're not talking like me, you are an imposter. You are trespassing. So I had to remind you that I'm getting rid of the language barrier by telling you language matters. If he's your father, we are his children then he can only speak to us in his language. He's not going to pick you up and talk to you in somebody else's vernacular. He's not going to pick you up and talk to you like some other God. He's only going to talk his language. My sheep know my voice. But a stranger will not follow. So I want to know who you've been talking to that you don't know my voice. And you don't understand my word. And so Ezekiel said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. 
but he didn't prophesy his words. He prophesied the words God told him. And he saw the results because of the word of the Lord. Hear the word. Obey the word. Then you will see the word. I'm going to say that again for somebody. Hear the word. Then obey the word. Then you will see the word. I'm going to say that again for somebody. When you hear the word, you obey the word. But you're not going to see the word until you obey it. You don't see it first. You hear first. I told y'all the new eyesight is your ears. But it ain't nothing new. But it might be new to you. So this concludes the message today. It's all coming together. So when Ezekiel said what God said, the bones began to come together. So what I'm trying to say to you, Ezekiel had to get his emotions out of it. Because it was emotion, you have to get your emotions out of it. You have to pull, you have to pull your opinion out of it. You won't see it come together until your opinion gets out of it. Mm -hmm. So Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this reminder that our language matters we're not out of time because it's the 31st we got enough time to see you do it you're not in time so there is no time you can do it when you want to do it however you feel like doing it God and Father we thank you but don't move until our language change Don't answer until our language change. I hear you, Lord. He only responds to his word. He only responds to his word. He doesn't respond to your, he doesn't respond to your emotions. He doesn't respond to your tears. He bottles up your tears. But the only thing that reaches God and makes him respond is your faith. Without faith, it's absolutely impossible to please the Lord. So I don't know where you got off the faith train. And it doesn't even matter. Jump on it right now. Get back in your faith vehicle and ride out. In the name of Jesus. For I prophesy to you today that you shall live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. I prophesy to you today that nothing but the word of the Lord shall come out of your mouth. Even when you want to cry and complain, you'll spit out the word of God. In the name of Jesus. And not many days hence, you're going to see your situation respond in an expeditious manner. It didn't say the bones took another day to come together. It did it right then and there. It didn't, it didn't take a whole year for it to come together. It took only a matter of seconds. So what I'm trying to say is, it starts when you start talking. So gracious Father, we thank you today. Thank you for the reminder that it's already in us it's time for us to produce it father we're going to stop crying we're going to shut up the woe is me we're going to cancel the why me and lord we thank you for it being us because something you're trying to produce out of us that's going to cause nations to live my god to for the bones were the nation of Israel. My God, today. It took one language moment for a nation to live. My God, today. It took one act of obedience for a neighborhood to come back together. It took one moment of obedience for a marriage to come back together. It took one moment of obedience, amen, for relationship to be restored. And Father, you gave us the power to 
to jump over walls and leap over troops. And Father, we're going to walk in our kingdom authority as of now. Father, I prophesy low self-esteem gone. I know somebody said, you don't have to prophesy that. I'm speaking to it now. Self-esteem, hear the word of the Lord. You have the power to get up from there. You possess the power to live under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Live with God. Go with God. Stay with God. Hang with God. Rock with God. And you could never go wrong. And Father, I thank you now as we conclude this service. Father, that this word will not fall on stony ground. It will not fall by the wayside. But it fell on a heart of flesh. Because the day we hear your voice, I dare not choose to harden my heart. But I will open up my spirit to hear what the spirit is saying unto the church language matters and father we thank you we bless your name father now bring us back to this place this evening to celebrate what you have already done and father we thank you not for the future but i'm thank you for what you've done in the past even until now father for we take no thought for tomorrow we know you got it already and Father, we thank you. Let your love permeate, saturate us. Let your love abide. Yes, Lord. While they're in their cars traveling here for the seven o'clock hour, start the work. Start the healing, start the forgiving, start it now. In the name of Jesus, as we get ready to close out our calendar year, Father, we thank you now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for joy. And we thank you for peace. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. By sick, don't say amen, but put your hands together and give God some praise. Oh, come on. My praise is the benediction to the matter. My praise is the benediction to the matter. Hallelujah. I believe the God of the Bible. Yes, I do. Yeah. I believe the God. I still believe the God of the Bible. And Father, we thank you. Woo. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We magnify your precious name. I'll see you at 7 o'clock. We will be live, but we will be in person. Amen. It's our communion worship service. Amen. And after that, we'll sit down and eat and break bread with one another. Hallelujah. I want to say go in peace. Thank you for joining. I love you. Amen. If you need the address, it's 334 Veterans Memorial Highway. Hallelujah. Veterans Memorial Highway, Southeast. Hallelujah. We're getting ready for offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Please forgive me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's offering time in the building. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Grab your seeds all over the world. I feel, I like that. I say, grab your seeds all over the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your seeds all over the world. I told you language matter. I'm, 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 all right. Grab your seeds all over the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get ready to sow electronically. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're in the building physically, amen. We dare not sit at God's table and not tip him. Hallelujah. Amen. We're 100% tithing and giving ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. God is here to receive your seed. Amen. Those are online. Amen. The instructions to give us online, amen. Dare not sit in the presence and don't sow anything, hallelujah. Amen. Grab a $40 seed, amen, and sow in this moment, hallelujah. And Father, we thank you. Come on, let's sow, amen. If you sow in electronically, amen, let us know, amen. Turn, put on the screen, I sowed, pastor, hallelujah. Amen. I want to see you sowing, amen, hallelujah. Amen. Let's sow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. For we have been anointed. 
amen, to destroy every yoke, amen, and to lift every burden from our lives in another, amen. Come on, give you strength to so now. I have been anointed for supernatural progress and provision, amen. We have been anointed for change of status and for supernatural abundance. We see God multiplying back to us all the money that we use, all the money that we give or circulate it in any way, amen, in a never-ending cycle of increase, amen, because, amen, we believe in the word of God, his grace is over our lives, and his power is undeniable, amen, I want to say thank you for sowing, amen, if you sowed, amen, amen, please put it on the screen, amen, thank you, and thank you, lady friend, seed sown, amen, thank you very much, amen, for seed sown, amen, I want to see you, hallelujah, thank you to every individual, amen, that's sowing electronically, even present now, I'm doing this broadcast, or even after it, amen, we end it, amen, thank you for your amazing seed sown, amen, your seed has not gone unnoticed, amen, the Lord will reward that seed in the name of Jesus, I believe God, hallelujah, amen, that we will not live a broke life, amen, because the word of God is rich, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, pastor, amen, pastors, amen, thank you for sowing, thank you for sowing, thank you, thank you, thank you, missionary, I thank you, hallelujah, amen, thank you for the seed, thank you, deacon, hallelujah, thank you, amen, thank you, D2, thank you, I screwed up, hallelujah, thank you so much, amen, thank you, thank you, we're leaving here, amen, it's four o'clock, hallelujah, I love y'all with the love of the Lord, hallelujah, amen, thank you once again for thinking it, not robbery, to join us in worship on the three o'clock hour, amen, we will be back here at seven o'clock, amen, if you can make it, I know many people, amen, have their own respect places they're going to be, amen, wherever you may be, God bless you and we love you, amen. hallelujah, we're leaving this place, amen, Father God, we thank you. Father, as we leave this place, as we sign off, amen, but we're not signing off from your presence. Hang out with us, chill with us, roll with us, God. Sit on the front porch and on the deck with us. God, show up to HR and you know what to do. Blow our minds. Father, we thank you. We thank you for increase. We thank you. We thank you. We are thanking you for increase in the name of Jesus because a sower is never without seed. Yes, Lord. And Father, we thank you for living and for having a seed filled life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thanking you now for a seed filled life. My life is filled with seeds to sow. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you, God. Now, God, amen. Amen. I'm praying early, God. Hallelujah. Even on tonight as we leave these places, amen, from our places where we shall be, God, protect us, God. Keep the drunk drivers away. Even now, some people have started early. God, keep them at home. Hold them back wherever they may be. If you got to arrest them, arrest them, Father. Father, I thank you. Protect them, but save the drunk driver. In the name of Jesus, save them, Lord. The person driving high, whatever they're doing, God. They were cause an imbalance in their system, Lord. Father, I thank you for keeping them and for delivering them. And for keeping and saving us, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. God